Hello there, thank you for coming by PosterCentral.com's video blog today. I'm Pete Howard and Dick Clark's Caravan of Stars from the summer of 1964. Look at this fun, colorful poster and this lineup. 16 musical acts and an MC. And just a beautiful, colorful jumbo window card that's full of action, musical stars obviously, a few wannabes as well, and fun music everywhere. So this one is really a treat. I've admired this poster for a long time. But, stealing the show, I'm going to get to the bottom row first. How's that? At least for me here. This is a Rookie Supremes concert poster. My goodness. The brand new, not brand new, they actually had some unsuccessful singles out before this, but you know, still very much a new act on Motown Records. They had not even cracked the national top 20 at the time of this poster again the summer of 64, even with the record that's here on the poster. I'll go ahead and bring it in and show it to you in the light blue box, bottom center there above the yellow stripe. Yeah, there you have it. When the Love Light Starts Shining Through His Eyes, which a lot of us know well from their greatest hits albums. The first one came out in the 60s. And that record peaked nationally at number 23. So they hadn't even broken again the national top 20. But you know something? At the time of this show, June of 64, they did have a brand new single just coming out. It would chart within a week or two. Brand new, not on the charts yet. And it was this little thing called, Where Did Our Love Go? And as you know, that record done go to <laughs> the number one position and was the first of five consecutive number one pop hits for the Supremes. And the first of 12 number one pop hits over the next five years. So in other words, they were quickly bound for the stratosphere, and this is just before the rocket ship took off. So, whew, quite a rookie indeed concert poster for the Supremes with their bottom build and out of the top 20 and, you know, basically outside looking in for the time being, but only for a few more weeks. Okay, so the Supremes aside, you got Dick Clark's smiling face up there, as you can see, up there at the top, top center, amongst the red information there. And uh, this is a tour blank, so that red print is the stuff that's stripped in just for this show, whereas every other stop, of course, had different dates and venues and ticket prices and so forth. And for this one, it's um, the fairgrounds in Allentown, Pennsylvania. And as you can see at the very top of the white area, you do have the usual radio and disc jockey tie-in, WAEB's Gene K. Okay, so I'm going to run through these acts really quickly. There are so many of them doing the usual head-scratching over some of the suspect song choices on there. Um, they're trying to sell tickets or they're trying to sell records. Allegedly, this is a ticket-selling poster, isn't it? But anyway, you've got Major Lance, Monkey Time. Uh, that's a good choice. Top 5 um, Rhythm and Blues and Top 10 Pop. Then you've got the Shirelles with Tonight's the Night, top center there under Clark. And that's the first and maybe biggest head-scratcher on the poster as to why they would pick Tonight's the Night. I mean, yeah, that was their first top 40 hit, granted, but it was a minor hit, and it was four years ago, forever in the 1960s. I mean, why didn't they put on there Will You Love Me Tomorrow or Soldier Boy, both number one records for the group? Okay, so then you've got Gene Pitney with Yesterday's Hero. That's his most recent single that didn't do anything at all. And The Crystals with Then He Kissed Me. That was a top 10 record the previous summer. So that's obviously a good choice as I get in even a little bit closer. And then you've got Brian Hyland with Devoted to You. And that did nothing. I sure would have loved to have seen Itsy Bitsy Teeny Weeny Yellow Polka Dot Bikini on there. Number one record for him. And then you've got The Rip Chords with Hey Little Cobra. Great choice. Top five pop record. Anybody who was listening to AM radio at the time knows. Following that is The Reflections with Just Like Romeo and Juliet, my personal favorite song on the entire poster, and that was a hit, top ten pop um, in the national charts. Then you've got Dean and Gene, I Want to Be Loved, which was not a hit for them. The West Coast Coasters, aha, paid special attention to the fine print. The West Coast Coasters, well, that's simply because their charting days were behind them and all their glory years, and they had splintered into two or three different versions of the coasters. So who knows which original member might be in this West Coast Coasters. And uh, as I said, the record didn't fly because their charting days were done. Okay, then you've got the Dixie Cups with Chapel of Love, and that's the poster's home run. Oh, my goodness. It was, um, that particular record was the number one platter in the country for the previous three weeks leading up to this concert. So, boy, the Dixie Cups, Chapel of Love, every single person in the crowd knew that one. 
Then you've got round robin, kick that little foot Sally Ann, except they shortened it and dropped off the last two words of the song title. They dropped Sal Sally Ann to squeeze it in, and that record barely charted. Then you have Brenda Holloway and Every Little Bit Hurts. Now that's her signature song, and it was a top 20 pop hit this year, so it was a good choice. And, uh, but I'll tell you, Brenda really went on to bigger things. She, um, the following year, 65, all she did was open for the Beatles, hello, and play their landmark Shea Stadium show in August of 65 to 55,000 people. Then you have Mike Clifford, and he um, had three charting records, but this was not one of them. And the Supremes we've covered in the blue box, and then George McCann the MC gets the last colored box here. And at the bottom, never charting, but maybe they were just the house bands, you know, playing the um, musical bed for the vocal only acts, I'm not sure. But you've got on there the Casuals and the Liverpools. Not a surprising name, given this was the year of Beatlemania in America. So, Dick Clark's Caravan of Stars. You know, he was always known as America's, what, um, or the world's oldest living teenager. Well, at the time of this show, he was about 35 years old, so... You know, that seems pretty young now to you and me, but uh, remember the mantra in the 60s among the youth, never trust anybody over 30. <laughs> so Dick Clark was very much a middle-aged or old man by then, but uh, you know, they had to trust him or else there would have been no tour and no cool poster like this as well. So great fun showing it to you. Thanks a lot for uh, dropping by and we'll see you again sometime soon for something just as fun, I hope. Okay, have a good day. Take care. Bye-bye.